You played with Seau, right? Junior Seau? Yes. In, in, for the Chargers? Yes, yes. No. I, so you, 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 you were in linebacker room meetings with Junior Seau? Oh, my Terry God, Cruz? man. First of really? all, he was absolutely incredible, man. I mean, and, you know, he owned San Diego. You got to understand. Yeah. I mean, he, he literally grew up just 30 miles away and, you know, went to SC and then came right over there. So it was like it was his town. It was his place. But, th- you know. It's kind of an example because this is so wild. You know, for me, I turned 55 this year. And, you know, it's so many players that were with us that, and I mean, what blows my mind is that there are people who are younger than me that are gone, that Mm -hmm. are passed away. And Mm -hmm. I was thinking, this is wild, man. To be an old football player is is kind of rare. Um, It's something to do with the lifestyle, something to do with the way you know, we think and the whole thing, but I always try to talk to players and let them know that, you know, the game is just one small part of your life. You know what I mean? There's much more to go. The goal is not this. The goal has to be to live long. You know what I mean? It's kind of like I heard an, an adage said one time that, that there are no old bad pilots. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you think about it. You know what I mean. All the pilots that are old are good, <laughs> and you want to be a good pilot with yes. your life. Yes. You know what I mean. You want to see the end. I mean, it gets better. You know what I'm saying. It can get better. And I'm telling you, I, I'm a true example of this because I'm so thankful. You know, I, I appreciate my NFL career, but it's always about what was next for me. And you know, I, I really appreciate the fact that I had a good family and my wife who always let me know that there was more for me than this. Well, you know, obviously you have a great family and a great base and a great heart and a great head and a great talent, Terry Crews. And, and so it's so difficult. I've seen it. The NFL Network turns 20 this fall. Wow. And I've just seen so many players who get out of the game and are wondering what's next. Yep. And, you know, I've had this conversation before and happy to have it again here because I'm just wondering, you must have been, if I'm not mistaken, 27, 26 when you were done. Yeah. What? How did you get into what you're doing now? And I imagine, was it tougher than actually getting into the NFL is to transition to what you're doing now? Ted? Absolutely. I'm going to tell you, when I first moved to L.A., uh, I moved here with my family and the whole thing, and the first job I ever had was sweeping floors. That was the first job. And Where? It was at a play. It was at a temp agency, and it was a place they sent me to factories, and they were like, "Hey, man, you sweep up over here." And they paid me literally at the end of the day. It was the kind of agency that they paid you mm-hmm. just daily. Um, but I was that broke. I was that desperate. But also, I was that willing. You know, you you have to get to a point where you are willing to start over from the bottom. And this is the problem I've seen with tons of superstar athletes because you're coming into a place and everything's different, and they're not willing to start at the bottom. I'm not saying you have to sweep floors, but you do have to have to humble yourself in order to learn. It's the same thing with martial arts. You have to bow to your teacher, you know? Mm-hmm. And a lot of guys want to walk in and be like, I'm the man, and I own this place, and they find it really difficult because you're going to get resistance in every way. So then what was your break Um for, for movies, TVs, or whatever. You know what's funny? Uh, uh, I auditioned. Uh, one thing, I got invited to an audition because I was doing, you know, broke. Uh, I went for it simply because I was invited. And my wife was like, you know what? You got nothing else. You might as well try it. Mm-hmm. And I auditioned for a show called Battle Dome, which was <laughs> American Gladiators on steroids. You can look at it on YouTube right now. I played this really larger-than-life character named T-Money. It's like wrestling meets a game show. And I got it. Like, I got the job. And all of a sudden, I'm an actor. You got to understand, flash forward 25 years, I'm getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And I'm going, this is unreal. I am living a dream. But it does start with the humility. Like, I had to just you know, give it up to other people who helped me and who showed me what to do. My first movie, I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Michael Rooker, who's one of the best actors in the game right Mm -hmm. now, he showed me how to do everything. And I just listened. He was like, Terry, when when I move this way, I want you to replace me and just take over, man, and then say your lines. And he said, and if you have an itch on your face, just itch it while you're talking. 
And I was going, okay, because I would be like Mr. Robot, like I have to say my line and whole thing. And I had all these people who were willing to tell me mm -hmm. how to act because I was willing to listen. But if I walked in there and acted like I knew everything already, I wouldn't have gone far at all. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.